Let's go over the beta for some shoulder stability and mobility testing. So if you're like me, some of the hardest parts about this quarantine, besides needing a haircut really badly, is not being able to rock climb and not being able to get into the gym. So this is a really good opportunity for us to do some cross training so we can get back into the gym in a really healthy way. And so today I wanna to go over some tests so we can assess just how healthy our shoulders are, how stable, how mobile our shoulders are, so we can get, so we can assess those problems and try to mitigate them before we get back in the gym. So we have three tests that we're gonna go over today for our shoulders. We have the upper quarter closed kinetic chain stability test. That's a mouthful. We also have the upper quarter Y stability test. And we're also going to be going over the active lat mobility test. So testing the length of your latissimus dorsi as it relates to your shoulder mobility. What these tests can tell us is in a more objective way, if we have tightness or poor stability in our shoulders and how that can lead to problems down the road. I want to show you how to do these tests at home so you can assess yourself. We're going to be assessing side to side differences and then you can even compare your scores to the normal scores of other people. All you'll need at home is some tape and a tape measure and maybe a mirror or if you can video camera yourself then you can actually see what's going on while you're doing the tests. So let's check the beta on it. So to perform the Y balance stability test for the upper quarter, you would, to do the formal test, you need the fancy elaborate setup. Let me show you how to do that and then how to do that at home, assuming you don't have one of these. When you set up, you set up in a push-up position with your feet no more than 12 inches apart. You then are instructed, so this time we're, we're testing my left arm, my not so good arm, and then you're going to go to the side, to the front on the diagonal, and to the back on the diagonal. And we're gonna get a measurement of each of them. So with the fancy setup, you can slide out to the side, trying to go as far as you can and recover. You can shift your hips a little bit, but remember you need to keep your feet 12 inches apart in the back, no more. Then we can test to the front, and recover, and then test to the back, and recover. And check it out. For those of you who don't happen to have that fancy Y balance kit at home, you can just mark out some tape on the floor. Straight line, and then these are at, this is at 90 degrees. Place your hand right next to the diagonal there, and then just take tape as your marker, and then from here, you can reach out to the side and place the tape and recover. Place. And place. And then you have your measurements that you can measure from that hand. So for the Y balance test, give yourself three opportunities. A couple times to warm it up and get a feel for the movement. And then make the third attempt your real test. What you can do is we're gonna go over, we're gonna go over how to calculate your scores compared to normative data, but the easier way to do it is to just compare side to side. If one side is less than 90% of the other side, then that's a potential for a long-term risk factor for an injury in your shoulders as you continue to climb. So measure each side and then compare. Okay, if you wanna get fancy and compare your scores to normative data, this is how you do it. You're probably gonna have, some, have to have someone measure for you, but you go with your arm out to the side, find your C7 vertebra, which is at the base of your neck, the one that sticks out a bit more than the other ones above it. Hold your arm to the side and you're gonna measure the distance from C7 to the tip of your finger here. And that's gonna be your measurement based on your arm length. So take the length of each of your measurements on the Y balance test and then divide them by your arm length that you just measured. And that's how you're going to get the score percentage of your limb length. Now this is compared to college overhead athletes. Climbers I expect a lot from because we really have a lot of demands on our arms. 
So I'd hope your scores would be at or better than these scores. And remember, if you have a difference of at least 10% side to side, that's something that you'd want to address. Okay, let's go over the upper quarter closed kinetic chain stability test. So in this study, they tested males in the full push-up position, females in the kneeling push-up position. So test whichever one you want, just knowing that the research, if you're comparing to the normative data from the research, um, that's what they're measuring against. So to set up the test, you want two pieces of tape 36 inches apart from each other, and you'll need a timer as well. Set up with both hands just inside the tape, and you're gonna get in your full or modified kneeling uh, push-up position, and then you're gonna start the timer. You have 15 seconds to touch the opposite tape as many times as you can. So when you say go, you want to try to touch as quickly as you can. Go for 15 seconds and then stop, rest for 45 seconds, and then you're going to start the test over again. You're going to do this a total of three times, so two 45 second rests and three 15 second tests. Add up all the touches you got on your best trial and compare it to these normative values. Active males just under 25 and active females just under 28. The researchers also found that if you have fewer than 21 touches, that puts you at a really high risk for shoulder injuries moving forward with your sport. So let's look at our active latissimus dorsi range of motion muscle length test. So a lot of climbers have really tight lats because we're overdeveloped and that shrugs our shoulders forward. I want to see what our shoulder mobility is when you account for the lats. So how we do that is you set up against the wall and I want your back pressed flat against the wall. So you're not doing a wall sit, you're standing pretty upright, but your back is flat against the wall. Then both arms are going to raise up in front of you. Keep the low back pressed against the wall. As you get higher, you'll feel your back want to arch like this because of where the lats originate on the spine. Keep the back pressed and see how high you can go. Ideally, you should be able to get both hands all the way up touching the wall. See how high you are relative to that, which can tell you tightness in your lats. And also check side to side. My left side's a little bit tighter and not going quite as high as my right side. But the most important thing is keeping the back pressed flat. Don't let that back arch, because then you can see it's really easy to get up higher with the back arched. I like this one because you can use it as kind of a self-outcome measure. As you're doing your own body work, rolling your lats, working on your thoracic mobility, working on your shoulder mobility, you can come back to this test over and over again and see how much higher you're getting. It's pretty cool.